This is a controller. It controls shit. Um, it's supposed to be a 1500 watt, although uh, it probably isn't. It might be. Don't know. Anyway, I'm going to strip it apart purely because I want to beef the traces up to make it a bit more robust. So to start with, you take the screws out and you pull it apart. Why is it in a toolbox? You've never got any Phillips screws, drivers. God, those bloody screws are tight. Uh, as you can see, I mean they've actually, they have done quite a good job of it. But I still want to beef it up even more. There was things like where the capacitors are. I don't... Yeah, I'm going to beef it up where... You just know what I mean. And also, I'm going to add some bloody heat sink. There's no heat sink at all on there. There's a bit of oil, which I think is sort of sort of a heat sink, but it isn't conventional heat sink paste. You know what I mean? So there's none in there. Absolutely none. So I'm going to do that to allow it to circulate the air, heat, transfer the heat, dissipate the heat. That was the one, Tony. So I'm going to beef these up. Loads of solder, jobs are good. I've beefed some of the traces up, the rest of them I can't do because of the heat plane. It's got a massive sort of ground plane and it's sucking the heat away from my soldering iron and it's not good enough to do it, so I've done most of it. Now, before anybody talks about this, these are the shunt resistors. These measure the current uh, that's being pulled out of the controller. Now, to increase the power, you can actually just put loads of solder on those, or two of the three, um, I ain't going to do it, purely because you've got to be careful with the battery, because the battery's got to be able to handle the power, if you, the battery can't handle the power, the voltage drops, you knack your batteries and that's the end of it. 1500 watt is going to be ample for this, um, whoever buys it, please don't do it, <laughs> don't do it, really. So, anyway. Uh, everything seems in order, so I'm going to get some heatsink paste and put it on there when I can find it. I know I've got some somewhere. I'm going to put that back together. Like that. In there. Like that. I don't like that. How's that? Oh yeah, of course, it's screwed on there. So, I'm going to put it back together. Jobs are good in. And then I'll probably silicon seal that up. Don't be so suggestive, Tony. I've designed and printed the casing thing. This is made in provision for bigger batteries. Obviously, you know, there's a lot more space. But anyway, that sits in there. The controller sits in there. I know there's no air circulation, but hopefully it'll be all right. The other one was encased completely anyway. Uh, the battery plugs in there, which I'm, I'm not going to plug in. Uh, this has got an anti-spark uh, connector on it. I've each shrunk part of this. I've got to do the other half when this is finally finished balancing, which it's not done yet. Um, what's next? I think I'm going to put it on the bike and I'm going to hook all the phase wires and the controller and everything else up just to make sure everything works fine. Fingers crossed. I've tacked three cells on here. One, two, three. And then I've linked them across like that. So, what I've got to do now is get the BMS, which has already been modified. So, as you can see, um, I've taken, is it BC8 and BC9? I've just taken the link off those, uh, resoldered them as a single, you know because there was a link across there 
So now I've got BC3 to BC4 and I've got BC13 to BC14 and on the corresponding wire there wasn't a wire in there and now there is because that one was linked. If you want to change these things, so if I wanted to do something like um, what's this, a 13, so if I wanted to make this a 12S literally you link BC8 and BC9 and then you take that connector, you take that wire out and you don't need it. If you think about it logically it's just basically bridging the two connections and if you want to make it any less equally you space it out so if I wanted to make a um, 11S you take BC10, BC11, link that and then take either, either BC10 or BC11 wire out. Is that that one? Yeah, you take one of those two wires out. It's as simple as that. So, what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to assemble this and then I can put it on here. BMS is mounted literally with double sided tape, it will be fine like that. This wire here goes to your battery negative. Now, how my battery negative is, I can remember. There. Is it? <laughs> so that one has to go to there somewhere, you know, the shortest route as possible. When you solder into these, uh, just solder in between the cells. Uh, there's a lot less heat transfer there. Don't solder directly onto the terminal. So I'll wire that one up there. So all I'll do, I'll wire this one up here first. If I run that round, somewhere like that, out of the way, and then I'll just tack it into the middle. Of, I'll just tack it into the middle of the cells there, and then that's that one done. And then the first one, which is that one, then goes to that side there. But obviously, I'll run it round that way. So if you so, I'll solder that directly to that that connector there. And then the next one will go to the next battery positive which because that one's linked down to there that's the negative of it so the positive is on that side there so I'll run that in the middle there and then you get your next one and you run it to the next battery positive which will come round here and go to about there or there wherever onto that terminal there and you just keep going until you get to the end until your final battery positive which goes there and now that's basically it. So they, they recommend to actually disconnect these things before you start soldering and then you plug it all in afterwards because the Atmel chip it can, um, it, it, can it, doesn't, it doesn't break it but it does mess it up uh, it, it doesn't know what to do with it and it locks up so you may have to you may find that you've got to, you've got to unplug these anyway afterwards and then plug it back in and then it'll fire up into life so I'm going to solder all those up, I'm going to take that out, I don't completely take it out, what I'll do is I'll tape it down on there so as I know the length of the wires, it makes it a lot easier. So obviously you need to leave a bit of slack so as you, can, you can unplug it, don't just pull the bloody wires like that because otherwise you're not going to get it unplugged. So I'm going to do that wire it all up, tidy it all up and then I'll come back. The next thing to do is get your connector, put your uh, get your meter, put your meter on uh, the negative onto the negative point which is this one here and then run your positive across these and it should be an incrementing value each time. Um, if it isn't then you've got something swapped over obviously it'll, it'll go up by whatever the voltage of the cells are these are at about 4.1 volts at the minute so it will go 4.1, 8.2 that sort of thing so I'm gonna for the first time I'm gonna do it on camera <laughs> actually now I'm gonna plug the temperature sensors in first and then the Bluetooth module which there's one of goes into there now I'm going to plug him in. That's it. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the app. Don't know where the app is. This is the charge port, which is going on the side of the casing that I've designed and printed and everything else. That's simply the Bluetooth what's it thing. There's the main power. Jobs are good. And so what I'm going to do now is cover it. Oh, it's balancing as well. As you can see. Well, it's in. The battery's covered in captain tape. It'll be fine. Uh, on the top we have the Bluetooth module which stays blue while the app is connected. That doesn't get warm. Uh, this is for the, the charge port which is going to go on the out case in here. So that's all in. That's nice and it doesn't move up or down in there. It'll move sideways. In actual fact it comes out with just one connector so you just unplug that and then you can pull the old battery out which is by design. Uh, there is more room for more batteries but these are all the batteries I've got so the app itself is quite good it tells you what's going on anyway which you can't use with one hand um, it tells you what your current is and what your your remain, remaining kilometres you can't change that into miles unfortunately and I think this piece along the top is the miles an hour so hang on so you've got all these settings here this is actually a free download it's even got my name on it there look <laughs> uh, so you've got your battery state it gives you all the voltage information all the details what, what errors have gone off battery voltages uh, pr protection of information cell over voltage times the reason why this will say cell over voltage times is purely because I was calibrating it you can actually calibrate each cell if you've got the, the PC interface so that's that done now what I'm going to do is I've 3D printed a cover which is going to go on here and it's going to be held on all the way around with tape which is what version 1 was on mine uh, it was just held on with tape literally so it's going to be held on with tape and then I'm going to cover it with carbon fibre covering so it can e be easily removed if needs be so that that ain't going anywhere absolutely nowhere there's one bolt at the bottom which holds the controller in and then it's cable tied up the back there and obviously the wires go all around and they're shoehorned in there so I'm going to put the cover on tape it all up cover it over and then sign it <laughs> because somebody wanted me to sign it so if you're going to sell it sign it the other thing as well that I need to explain with these things uh, when you open the throttle inherently because this this axle here because this axle here wants to turn it will turn in the opposite direction of the motor so if the wheel is turning that way the motor itself on the inside will have to try to turn that way now if you don't have one of these things this is a torque arm that I fitted if you don't have one of these things what happens is it routes out the the cutouts so you have to counteract it with, with some form of attachment which is in the shape of a torque arm. So that will stop it from actually pulling it out of the axle, out of the dropout. Now, like I say with my original one which was 1500 watts, I ran that for months with no torque arm and I didn't have any problems. As long as you do the bolts up tight enough you're fine. But there are some people who have had problem after problem with them and some people have actually lost the back wheel because of it. So it is best practice to put a torque arm on there. Uh, what I've got to do next after I've done the casing, I've got to turn it upside down and then I've got to do the brakes. Uh, then I'm going to pump the tyres up and I'm going to take it for a test ride. It's done! It was easy! It just took a long time because I had to design casings and God knows what else. It's not perfect. But it's close. I even put my own little mark on it. <laughs> anyway, to charge it, I haven't actually got. I've got a cover, which it seems it's, it's holds on all right. Uh, to charge it, 
As simple as this. Plug it in. That's it. It's charging. My cells, as you know, I was trying the active balancer, so all the cells are all out, and they've got to balance themselves out. So, but that's charging. That's working perfectly. I unplug that. The BMS in this, oh, reflection. The BMS in this stays on permanently all the time, 100%. I've tested one of them, which is running on the uh, the Xiaomi M365, and they're fine being left on all the time. I'm going to go out and test it. Uh, I don't really think there's anything else to do. I think it's all done. All the gears, everything seems to work. It's pedalable. It's not very heavy. Actually, I'll weigh it. Well, it weighs exactly 27 kilo. That's it. I am absolutely shocked. I thought they'd be a lot heavier than that. So, 27 kilo, all in. 15 ampere hour battery in there, somewhere. 1500 watt BMS, uh, charge port, sorry. 15 ampere hour, 54.6 volts battery, or whatever it is. 1500 watt controller in the bottom, BMS sitting on top of the battery. Everything's working, so I'm gonna go and test it.